in developing the surface of this transition piece. I'm going to divide it into triangles and see how many there is. Reason for that being that this triangle that I've colored in green, CBA, is at the back side, at the back of this transition piece as it is lying. This is an isometric view of it. So that's at the back part, and I think that can be forgotten very easily because there's a triangle, and then there's going to be this triangle here, this white one. I'm going to color it in quickly. You can see I've colored it in in a slightly different shade of green. So that triangle, that one is the next one. So there is two triangles that we must keep in mind. In short, I'm only going to label these lines, triangulation lines, as A, B, G, H, line E, line F, line F, line E, because those two will have the same length, these two will have the same length, this will have the same length as that one, so it's E, that one will have the same length as F there, so I'm going to call it F, that line F, and that line from this corner here up to that point will be E as well. I'm going to label it in short as that. I'm not going to say uh, C, A, or A, B, as I've done in the past, just to make it easier. We know that C, D has a length of 72, and we know that D, E has a length of 114, so I'm not even going to label that. So I'm now going to look at the triangle labeled C, B, A, and I'm looking at this triangle with the sides H, B, and G. So that's two of them. So at this point, I have now drawn two planes. I've drawn this one, which had a height of 43. We know that half of the base at the back is 57, because the whole base was a 114 divided by 2. And this B distance, which we would have worked out, and we would have worked out by means of construction the H distance, and we know that that distance is 14, because it's the straight line from that distance there, we know that is 14, so that G distance then being 14. That G distance then 14. We're now going to build the next triangle. So this distance can be worked out by means of construction in the orthographic view. That distance we know is 14, and we have that distance already. So now we've added that yellow triangle, which is 14, we know and the distance D, which we would have worked out by means of construction. Our next triangle is this one on the left side, which is this purple one that I've just drawn, with that being side E that we still don't know the length of, which we had constructed earlier, so we will draw this purple one. So here we have drawn the purple one. We know what that base length is. That base length was given to us 72. We worked this one out by construction, and we completed this purple triangle. Let's go to the next one. We now get to the point where we have a circular part of this transition. And remember with circular parts, you have to work out the circumference and divide the circumference into 12 parts. Now in this case, the circumference there will only be half a circumference. There's only six segments. So we're only going to work out half the circumference and work out uh, and divide the circumference then by six. I would still work out the full circumference divided by 12 and just use that answer for each one of these lengths. So remember these lengths that I'm referring to. So you will note that I've now added that length by means of a leader or with an, an arrow pointing towards one of these segments. So one segment, then 7,33. See how close you can get to that. Otherwise, just set your compass to three, uh, seven millimeters for that distance. And that will go the same for each one of these segments here. So now we've got that 7,3. We've got the length of E, which we've done constructively, and the same with F. So let's go and do our development. So here's the next triangle with F side, as we've worked that out, side F being about 80 millimeters in length, and that's 7,33 millimeters. 
Next triangle, this green one, or greenish one, with side F and that side F being the same and that side 7,33. And there we have that greenish colored triangle. Now the next one. Next triangle, line E and that section 7,33 to be built on this F line. And there we have it. Measured E, we've measured 7,33 and we've got that blue triangle. Next one. This big triangle, the one on the very front side, to draw that one with that side that we've got already E. We know that the distance DE is 114, so that length there will be the same as this one. And there we have it, the big one. From here on, we're going to go the same way as we've done with these. I'm going to measure that 7,33. I'm going to measure the length of, S, of F. I'm going to measure 7,33, I'm going to measure the length of F, then I'm going to measure the next one, which is 7,33, same with F again, then I'm going to measure another 7,33, and the same length as what E would be, because we're going to have E here, F, F, and another E. As I've explained, I'm now going to draw that triangle, that triangle there, that green one, and that orange one there at the back, as can be seen here. There's the blue one, same as this one. There's the green one, same as that middle one. There's that orange one, same as that one. Now, once again, we're going to have a triangle the same as this purple one. And there we have that triangle, D and 72, the length of D being about 62 millimeters. The problem now is that we are on the way to finish off. And we must not forget that we now have a straight line here. Yeah. That straight line of 14 millimeters. And then we also have that part at the back. I'll show it more clearly in a moment. Now, I was speaking about that plane at the back, which would be that one there, that last half. We started off with these two. And then we will have to end off with those two triangles. Let me show you even clearer. Taken away the circle and its divisions. Now we can see the back clearly. There was the seam where we started. There's the base of 57. And we have to make use of triangulation. So we have a four-sided figure. From that corner to that corner to this corner to this corner. So once again, there's a four-sided figure that has to be triangulated and that's the figure that needs to be completed as well. So let's have a look and see how we finish this drawing. Now just as we've had a straight side, this straight side here, that one, this yellow triangle, we have the same on that side, straight side, which would have been the yellow triangle next to the purple one. So let's do that quickly. There is that straight line first, first straight line of 14, which is on the right hand side of the drawing or our right hand side as we look at it and then obviously H having the same length as this H here. We're now going to complete the next two triangles which is these two, the darker green or olive green and this plain green. So there's the darker color of green, this green one, this same side, that smaller one that you can see here with side B and side H and that side B. Don't forget about that one. It's the same as this side B. And there we have that triangle built on top of the yellow one, the same as this one. This is how we end off this transition piece with this green one, that side A and that side A coming together. But I think we forget about this one, that yellow one. Watch out that you don't forget that. There's a straight line. There's a straight line. Let me show you on the isometric drawing. I'm referring to this yellow side here. There's a flat side of 14. We started off with a flat side of 14. There was another flat side of 14. And then we got onto this half circle. Then we end off with a, another yellow triangle on this side, the right hand side of the drawing. And that would be a 14 millimeters. And then at the back, this green one, as you can see here, that would also be 14 millimeters. So this then would be the final 
solution to the transition piece. Let's count them. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen triangles that needs to be completed in this transition piece.